Hey, so this is gonna be a short tutorial where I'm gonna teach you a couple of techniques of creating some higher fidelity designs and some cards. But of course, this is not a proper UX design or a UX process or anything like that. This is just for you to practice a couple of nice UI skills. Ready? Let's go! Okay, so we're back with another tutorial and this is gonna be more of a like a freestyle design. So I'm gonna start by creating a new artboard. It's gonna be an iPhone, but it doesn't matter which one. And then I'm gonna fill it with a rectangle and change the color to something dark. And I want it a little bit more in the blue side. So I'm gonna pick a very dark gray with a hint of blue in it basically. And I want it pretty dark, so I'm gonna play around with the values a little bit just to find the right balance, but of course we can modify it later after we have a couple of elements on it. So now let's create our first card. And I'm gonna make it so it's 24 points from the left side of the screen and 24 points from the right side. And then let's increase the height of it a little bit, but of course I'm gonna modify this later as well. And then I'm gonna round the corners a little. And I'll go with 32, but if it's too much for you, you can go with a lower number. Okay, now let's change the fill of it to a radial gradient. And then using the color picker, pick the exact color that you have in the background and boom, the gradient disappears and you can't see the card. But that's okay. Decrease the brightness of one of the elements and then drag the other lighter one closer to the top. Okay, now I'm gonna make another rectangle that's slightly narrower than the main card and then I'm gonna pick the darker shade for it and then blur it. And of course you can round the corners as well to have that organic look of that shadow because this is gonna serve as our shadow. Now using the oval tool I'm gonna make a large circle, fill it with a dark color and place it on the lower level of the background so it's under the card. Okay, I had my photo prepared, so I'm just gonna drag it onto the artboard and I'm gonna make it in a way that it overlaps the card a little bit on the top. And using the auto alignment tool, I'm gonna make sure that it's horizontally centered. Then using another ellipse with a darker color and blur, I'm gonna create a nice looking shadow that's right on the bottom side of the photo, so it doesn't really show up everywhere. That's a pretty simple technique that you can use many times over. Okay, you can't really do a proper glass morphism design with cards if you don't have a couple of bouncing balls in the background. So I'm gonna create them and I'm gonna pick the color off of my face and then create a couple of gradients for them. And then just simply create a couple of these balls, making sure that the lower color of the gradient is the darker one and place them around and behind the card. If you have a couple of smaller ones in the background, you can also blur them. So give them a layer blur of about 20 so therefore a nice bokeh effect. Okay, now that we have some objects, you can tweak a couple of the colors to make them a little bit more vibrant because now you'll know how they're gonna behave. And of course we want that card to have a background blur. So I'm gonna add a background blur to the card and then increase the value a little bit first to six, but if it's not enough, you can then increase it further. Okay, now that we have some glass morphism already in place, we can bump up the saturation on some of the colors to make those balls a little bit more interesting and also to match the colors of my face. Now I'm adding a stroke to the card, which is gonna be a white gradient coming from a very subtle like 10% opacity down to maybe 1% or even 0% from the top, but you can also make it diagonal if you wish. And the more components you'll have in place, so the more objects on the screen, the more you can actually tweak the elements. So you can make the background darker if you want a truly dark mode. And this is actually what I'm gonna go for. You can make your borders a little bit smaller and just play around with the effects. And of course, the darker the colors, the more you can bump up the brightness and the saturation on those balls to make them stand out more. And this is what we want. We want a nice contrast between those dark backgrounds, dark gradients and dark semi-transparent overlays and those visual elements that we have here. Now, if you want to add a little bit of a glow, let's create an ellipse above our ball that's overlapping the card on the top and then simply pick the lighter color, add a layer blur to it and then simply position it just above the edge of the ball, the top edge, it's just so a little bit of that light shines onto the card, just not too much. We don't really want this effect to be too over the top. Something like this looks kind of cool. And then you can duplicate this object and move it to the top ball and then place it under the card and make it slightly larger. 
And what I'm going to do here is drag this down on the layer list and simply pick a darker color because obviously if it's like this, it doesn't have to shine a light on it. But if you make it darker, it's going to make it look as if the card is casting a little bit of a shadow onto the ball. Okay, now it's time to tweak some colors a little bit more. So I'm going to go back into my card. And since we're mostly using purple and violet, I'm going to actually move the hue bar a little bit more to the right. Okay, now let's add some text to the card. So first of all, I'm going to go with my name, then a title, and then a couple of metadata that you can pick yourself. It can be anything, but it needs to make some sense, right? And to keep the fonts consistent, I'm not going to make too many different font sizes. So I'm just going to duplicate the main title, the name, and simply use it as the base for the numbers. And then I'm going to type in some numbers and using a smaller and lighter font, I'm going to make some labels or subtitles for that. And here is a handy trick on how to align it. My whole card is 327, so I divide it by two and create a rectangle with the resulting number, which is 163. Then I place it on the left edge of the card, duplicate it and place the copy on the right edge of the card. Then on the layer list, simply move them below the text and then select each rectangle and the text in it and then simply use the auto align feature to align it exactly in the center. And then once you're done, you can either keep those rectangles or you can remove them like I did. We're going to need a button on this card as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more height to it. And then I'm going to move one of those overlapping balls a little bit lower. And this is completely optional. But if you want, you can add another darker overlay on top of the card under the numbers. So they actually stand out a little bit more. But you don't really have to do that. You can go completely minimal as well. And of course, if you go that way, you also have to modify again those rectangles for alignment. So I'm just going to create new rectangles from that internal card and do it all over again. Okay, this is now aligned pretty good. So what we can do here is also decrease the font sizes and then realign it a little bit. You can decrease the opacity of that label font because it's not really that important. The data is what's important. And then let's create a new rectangle and start with the button. And there are many ways of creating a nice looking button. So you can either align it for like a little bit more space on the sides. It can be less rounded or it can be a full pill shape. So maximum roundness. And I'm going to go with that. And of course, this button can be the same width as this little overlay for the numbers. But I'm going to make it actually a little bit narrower to make this a little bit more interesting. And then I'm going to change it to a gradient and pick two different colors from my face because we're having pink and blue a little bit here. So I'm just going to pick one of those colors for one side and the other for the other side. And always make sure that the darker color is on the bottom. Now to create a nice looking shadow for this, we can go with a standard drip shadow or I'm going to just duplicate this entire element and add a layer blur to it and then simply move it underneath. And since it's already rounded, it has this nice vanishing edge on the sides. So you can actually place it like this or you can make it a little wider, it's all up to you. And I'm going to go with a slightly wider color, but what I'm also going to do is make another rectangle and fill it with a darker shade and make a blur on it as well to create a double shadow effect, which is actually going to stand out with the edge of the button from the actual blurred background. Okay, adding in some text onto the button now, and I'm going to go with a slightly smaller font for the text on the button so it's not too overwhelming. I'm going to go with 16. Okay, now let's select everything but the background. So I'm going to lock it and then just drag over all the layers and just move it up because we want the card to be rightly in the center. Okay, this is going to make our button look a little bit more 3D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an inner shadow that's completely white on top of it. So it's going to be X equals 4 and Y equals 4 and then a little bit of blur. And then you can decrease the opacity too. And after that, I'm going to add a darker shadow at X equals minus 4 and then Y equals negative 4 as well. And then the same type of blur. Okay, once we have the button in place and of course move the text to be exactly in the center of it, we can start modifying some of the other extra elements just to make it look a little bit more juicy. If you want to do it quickly, just pick one of the balls or one of the decorations in the background and then simply copy the properties and then paste them onto the rest of them. Just remember to modify all the shadows and all the colors to match the new colors that you changed. 
Okay, we do have our screen design right now. And of course it's mostly like a purely visual thing just to practice. It's not really like a full real app because it's not supposed to be. This is just to practice some visual skills. But to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna still bump up the colors, add a title to the screen and then duplicate my main card, but just the background and then place it on the sides so we can see that this whole thing can scroll. Once you're happy with the final result, you can of course try to add like a glassmorphic header to it, but that might be a little bit too much with all the effects already. So let's create a nice mock-up for it first. So what I'm gonna do is create a new frame and fill it with the same background color that we have on our phone. And then I'm gonna create a frame for the phone and let's rename that artboard and export it. And I'm gonna just save it to the desktop because we need a PNG image for it. And then I'm gonna drag it from the desktop to our canvas. So we'll have a duplicate. Okay, once this works, place it in the middle of our new rectangle and then simply holding the Alt key, modify the size of it. First, I'm gonna add a little bit of a rounded corner here and then I'm gonna modify the size so that gray rectangle has 24 points on every side of our main screen. So I'm gonna simply decrease the size of it until it's 24 on every side and then you can modify the border radius of that gray rectangle. But we don't want the same value that we have on the main screen because it will look like this and that's not what we want. We need a bigger value so that the background actually flows around perfectly. And for the background color, I'm gonna pick one of the lighter colors from our card, but still dark enough to be visible. And you could leave it at that, but let's add a couple of inner shadows to it to make a 3D effect that we did on the button as well. Now to make it a little bit more interesting, let's copy the entire card, all the layers, just group them and then copy them and paste them on the side of our screen, where the actual card that's behind the screen should be. Then change the name of the second person and paste in a new photo from a site like Unsplash and make sure that the photo is in similar colors than the entire screen. And of course, because I'm looking from the left to the right, I'm gonna just simply flip the photo of this guy to actually have him looking the same way because we like that consistency. And also remember to modify the numbers because it's really bad and looks pretty silly if those numbers look the same for every card. And since this card is a little bit outside of your view, so this is mostly decoration, you can also decrease the opacity of everything on it, except for the photo maybe. And the final step to make it more interesting is that you can also drag a couple of these balls that you created for the screen and actually place it on top of the phone or under the card, just anywhere, just not too many of them. Just remember to be subtle because with designs like this, it's really easy to actually go over the top and make it crazy and unreadable and pretty ugly. And of course, if you want to make a shadow like that, make sure that the shadow is casting, it's actually dark because it's on top of the card. So just modify it like this to make it look more three-dimensional and you can add a couple more and we're done here. So if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button and of course share the video if you liked it. And if you want to see more, you can check out my courses that you can get from Hype4.academy where I go more in depth about making beautiful high fidelity and usable designs. Cheers! I